Hello everyone, hello, hello, and welcome to today's teaching which is being presented to you by For Those Who Choose Ministries Incorporated. My name is Anisha Tillman and I am part of the instructors team here at For Those Who Choose and teaching with me today is my wonderful mother, Mrs. Annette Cook, <laughs> who, hello. Is, who is one of our co-founders and a lead instructor here at For Those Who Choose. So today, we are going to continue in our new series under the Rediscovering the Kingdom umbrella called The Purpose and Power of Kingdom Faith. This has been a really good series it's so far. And we're just at the beginning, you know, but it's, it's, you know, it's just, it's like enlightening. Yes. You know, and, and prayerfully people are seeing it as well that way. Yes. Prayerfully it's changing the thinking of people. You yes, know? especially when it comes to faith. Mm-hmm. So over the past few weeks, we've been asking you, what is faith? Mm -hmm. And we said, well, simply put, faith is defined as belief. Mm -hmm. And belief is defined as to believe, also to be persuaded of, yes, and therefore to place confidence in or even to trust. So it's important to know and understand that the greatest thing a person can lose on life or lose in life on earth is the loss of belief yes that's the greatest thing a person can lose mm. when a person loses belief he or she loses hope mm -hmm. and when hope is lost their purpose is canceled and meaning has no definition mm. so belief is the source of a reason and the raw material of commitment persistence and faithfulness now when belief is lost then life has no explanation Wow that's deep that's very deep <laughs> so no matter what you might lose in the midst of daily life never lose your faith in life Amen. so this series on the purpose and power of kingdom faith will be about this very challenge it's about the need to not just have faith but the vital need to have the right kind of faith mm. okay yes ma'am yes <laughs> so much of what we call faith today is simply convenient expectation what do you mean by that mm -hmm. in other words we only believe what we want what we want we believe what we expect and are willing to accept mm. so we believe in the good things that's good for us our belief is based on what we define and interpret as good right and acceptable Therefore, instead of believing in the sovereign nature and the all-knowing perspective of the Creator, our faith is only valid as long as our experiences are in keeping with our definition of good. Our definition of good. I keep saying that every week, but it's just like, it's like a light bulb that goes off, you know, mm -hmm. your definition of good, as opposed to what God's definition of good and right is. And his definition is the only definition and is the right, the correct and true definition. And the key word is truth. Exactly. It's truth. Yes. Amen. <laughs> so this series will challenge the quality and the nature of the faith you have inherited from our modern day belief systems. It will test them against the record of the time tested champions of faith in the Bible that overcame every type of challenge in their time. And we're going to look at a few of them today. Mm -hmm. So our intent in this series on the purpose and power of kingdom faith is to cause you to question the kind of faith you have embraced and to see whether it is of the quality that can stand the test of disappointments, the unexpected crisis moments filled with the silence of God, mm -hmm. and the loss of anything you hold dear. Mm -hmm. So we ask you, what kind of faith do you have? Can you believe in the dark what you were told in the light? <laughs> can you believe in hope when hope stops believing in you? And when in doubt, can you still have faith? Those are key questions that we're going to ask you to ask yourselves during this series. Amen. Now, the goal of this series is that you rediscover the faith of the lost culture of the kingdom of heaven and begin living at a level of life that does not get bogged down with the constant changes of life on earth. And believe me, something is changing and happening every day. Every mm -hmm. single day. Yes. Yes. So also recognize that the kingdom of heaven is a country. Mm -hmm. It is the invisible realm where God lives. 
Now, just like every other country, the kingdom of heaven, heaven has a currency. Yes, ma'am, it does. Right? Yes, it does. So the word currency is defined as something that is used as a medium of exchange, such as money. Yes. So, for instance, if I go to the store, in order for me to get something from the store, mm -hmm. I have to have money to purchase it and to get it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's how we get, that's the exchange. Mm -hmm. While the currency of the kingdom of heaven is faith. It's faith. That's key. It's faith. The essence of this kingdom currency is that nothing in the kingdom can be expected or appropriated without believing it is truth mm -hmm. and it, and expecting it is your right as a citizen to receive it. That's right. So you got to believe it. That's right. And expect it. Expect it. Expect that you have a right to it. That's key. Yes. As a kingdom citizen, you have a right to what you're asking for. Yes. You have a right and you have to know and believe that in your heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the kingdom is activated by believing it is real, that it is relevant mm -hmm. and present. And we must believe the kingdom government and its constitutional promises, having full conviction that it will function in your life both now and in the future. Amen. Amen. So our primary objective for this series is that you will be increased with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom of God's original intent and purpose of faith as kingdom citizens. Amen. And our hope is that it will help restore the power of kingdom faith in your life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now the content of this series is taken directly from the book called Rediscovering Faith, Understanding the Nature mm -hmm. of Kingdom Living. Amen. So the book was written by our mentor, the late, great Dr. Miles Monroe. And we strongly encourage you to read this book as well as you follow along in this series to obtain an even greater level of knowledge and understanding of kingdom faith. Amen. Amen. Now, we also want to remind you that the kingdom is God's greatest desire and passion for you and I. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. important that we study the kingdom. We are God's children. And his desire is that we rule this earth and that we reign in life with the influence of heaven. Amen. God wants the environment of his influence, which is the government, his government, mm -hmm. and the economy of heaven to come back to earth as he originally intended purpose and plan from the very beginning. Yes. God wants his heavenly kingdom or his heavenly government to be manifested in the earth through you and I. God's desire is that his kingdom government be manifested in the hearts and the minds of we his children to the mm -hmm. point that we take on his culture, yes. his nature, his morals, his standards, and, and his, his values, values so that the culture of heaven is manifested throughout the entire earth. Amen. As we've said many times before, culture is not in land, but instead culture is in the people of the land. Amen. It's in Dan, right? Right. Not in sand. <laughs> so when you possess the culture of the king of heaven, you will indeed be able to manifest heaven's culture here on this earth. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. Now, for those of you who are joining us live today, as we ask you each week, please join the conversation. Yes. All throughout this live session, we ask you to share your thoughts and questions with us. And it's at the end of each session where we always have an open forum. And it's during that time we'll respond to any questions that you may have online. Now, it's important to know you don't have to wait until the end to put your question in there. Yes. Put them in as we go along. Yes. And we'll get to them at the end of the teaching. Because our desire is always that you walk away from these teachings with knowledge and understanding that will allow you to apply what you are learning to your everyday life. Now, each week we talk about the parable of the sower which is in the book of Matthew chapter 13. And it's in this time where Jesus is explaining to his disciples, he's, he's explaining this particular parable that he taught. Mm -hmm. And he said in this parable, he says, the seed is the word of the kingdom and how the evil one is Satan. Oh. And he tells how Satan comes immediately to steal the word of the kingdom when you don't understand it. Yeah. Therefore, as we ask you this each week, you know, our objective is that you always walk away from these sessions with a thorough understanding of everything that we discuss Amen. because we want you to be able to do, you can't do what you don't know. That's right. You can't do what you don't know and what you don't understand, that's right? That's right. So we want you to walk away with knowledge and understanding that's going to allow you to do what you are learning. So please join, join the, the conversation. conversation. Please. Type your questions or comments in the comment section. 
and we have a team of people who will be able to share them with us. And also, if you don't mind, hit that like and share buttons while you're here. Share this message with others who may want to know more about the kingdom. It is for, for those, those who choose. choose. Amen. Amen. Mm. So now, before we move into our lesson for today, we're going to go ahead and officially open up our session in prayer. Amen. Let's petition the government of heaven to give the most high king of heaven permission to manifest his presence in and through this teaching today. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. And you pray with us at home Amen. as well. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm. Father, it is in the name of Jesus, Father, yes. that we come before you first offering up praise and honor and glory to your name, Father. Yes, For you are King of kings, you are Lord, Lord of lords, Lord. Mm. you are El Elyon, the most high God, you yes. are El Shaddai. You are great and greatly to be praised, Father God. Yes, and we Father. just thank you just for being who you are. Yes, we, do. we thank you for being the sovereign, the just and the holy God that you are. Yes, Father. We thank you for being Abba, Father. We yes. thank you for being our source and our sustainer, thank Father you. God. Yes. We thank you even just for being who you are consistently. And we thank you that we mm. can know and tell the world that you are good. For we have tasted of you yes. and seen that you, you are, are good. good. You said in your word, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and we know for a fact beyond the shadow of a doubt mm. that you are good father hallelujah father we thank you for this time that we have to sit before your people this time that you have given us to share the gospel of the kingdom father God. God and we thank you for one your presence being in this place where we are father mm. for you said where two or three are gathered together mm. in your name that you would be in the midst so we thank you for being here yes, we Father. thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of us your Holy Spirit that is our teacher mm. our leader and our counselor and our God father yes, God yes. and we thank you and we ask that you through your Holy Spirit it will speak through us today we empty ourselves out to be used by you father god to to complete the work in this earth that you have ordained for us to complete we pray that through your holy spirit that lives will be changed yes, that people that people will receive the truth and that the word will go forth into their hearts father god yes, we ask that you will turn up the soil of their hearts father yes. so that the word that goes forth today will be planted in their hearts yes, take father. root and be manifested in their lives father god yes. and we pray that you will give them understanding of what we're teaching today father god yes, through your spirit yes. so that the enemy will not be able to to steal what it is that they receive today mm. but that they will be able to take it in and they will be able to grow thereby and keep the enemy under their feet Hallelujah. which is where he is anyway because you have given us the authority mm. over him yes. so we thank you father god for this time Yes. We thank you for your presence and we thank you for everything that you are continuously doing through this ministry. And we even lift up one of our co-founders, Aaron Cook, in the name of Jesus. Yes, we lift Father, him up before, before you, you right now yes. in the name of Jesus, Father God. We yes. thank you that you have already healed him in, in the, the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. And we are waiting and, and expecting the manifestation Hallelujah, of God. the healing to take place in his body, Father yes, God. Lord you said Jesus. in your word that the chastisement of, of our peace was placed upon, upon you, you and we, by your stripes we, we are, are healed, healed father god yes. so we thank you that he has already been healed in the, the name, name of jesus, jesus. Yes, from the jesus. crown of his head to the soles, soles of, of his, his feet yes. father hallelujah. god and we pray that you would even continue to strengthen his faith during this time yes, father god that he will continue to believe you and that when he comes through this that he will come up with a testimony to hallelujah. decree and declare what the lord god has done for him hallelujah. and that the nature of the kingdom will be proved to the world through yes, this father hallelujah. god so we thank you father god we bless you we honor you yes, we glorify we you continue to speak through us today yes, father god it's in jesus you, precious and holy name we pray amen 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 thank you jesus and lord we set ourselves in agreement lord god with yes. those petitions father yes father. because you said if any two or more of us agree as in touching about anything in this earth yes you said you would do it yes yeah. so we come in agreement we come yes. on one accord yes. we come asking you in the name of jesus we believe we receive what we have asked you for yes. as we have asked it in accordance with your word. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name pray. of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 
Now, before we get into our new content for this week, let's begin by reviewing the key concepts we covered on last week. Mm -hmm. So last week we picked up on the story of Jesus and the crowd of people that went searching for him in Capernaum in John chapter six. Mm -hmm. If you recall, we previously talked about how Jesus checked the crowd of people on their motives for searching for him. Mm -hmm. So in essence, Jesus told them he knew that they were following him because of the fish and the bread that filled their bellies. Uh -huh. Amen? Yes. We said, like the crowd of people that sought out Jesus in Capernaum so long ago, many people today follow him only for his blessings. Wow. Again, mm. last week we said the only thing in life that is sealed and secure is Jesus Christ. Amen. So we ask, you may trust in God because he heals people, but will you still trust him when he doesn't heal somebody? and that person dies. Mm. You trust God to provide your rent money, but do you still trust him when the rent is due and the money is not there? Mm. You trust him to protect your children, but do you still trust him when they start doing drug and get into some type of trouble with the law? Mm. And we ask, where is your faith? Is it in Christ and what he can do for you? Or is it in Christ? Or is it in what he can do for you is the real question. Mm. Do you have faith in Christ? himself or are you only looking for what he can do for you wow mm. so in the kingdom of god our faith is more in the nature of god than the products of god yeah amen amen so last week we said that jesus's response to the crowd in that day in john chapter 6 must have ruffled their feathers because they followed up with some very challenging questions to him mm -hmm. so we went back to john chapter 6 and we read verses 22 to 33 to dissect the discussion Jesus had with the crowd of people. We saw that after Jesus called out the motives of the crowd, they asked him, well, what must we do to do the work that God requires? Mm. So Jesus answered them. He said, the work of God is this. Now I'm saying this to you as well. Mm -hmm. The work of God is this, and that is to believe on the one he yes. has sent. Mm. That is the work of God. That's it. To believe on the one that he has sent. Mm. Amen. That's it right there. So many people are like, I got to do the work. I got to do the work. And they think the work is in the church. But he's saying the, the work, work is, is to believe. believe. Amen. Mm. So then we asked, they asked him, mm. okay, so here they go. This is the crowd. What miraculous signs then will you give <laughs> us that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Mm. Then they go on and say, our forefathers, they ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. But Jesus followed up and said to them, I tell you the truth. It was not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, mm -hmm. but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. Mm -hmm. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So last week we said Jesus' response to their questions confused them. In essence, they asked him, well, listen to this. This is, mm. if we are not supposed to follow you for the bread or fish or anything else we can get from you, then what are we supposed to do? That's sad. Mm. <laughs> they were looking for signs, miracles, and wonders. If Simple Jesus replied, here he goes again, mm -hmm. believe on the one the Father sent. Mm. So in other words, we said that Jesus was telling the people, don't believe on the bread, mm -hmm. don't believe on the fish, don't believe on the miracles. Mm -hmm. He was telling them to do, don't put your faith in the activities of God because he may not act in the way that you expect. Right. You know? Right. So now we shared with you that this does not mean that God is unfaithful or untrustworthy, but it simply means that his purpose and his will are not always completely visible from our limited vantage point. Right. Mm. God's purpose is always greater than any of our personal perspectives or circumstances. Mm -hmm. And we reminded you of what it says in Proverbs 19 and 21 where it tells us there are many plans in a man's heart or a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that That's shall impressive. prevail. That's right. God's purpose is so much greater than us individually. Yes. He has a global collective plan. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we've got to look at it in that standpoint. It's not about what we think or what we feel. Exactly. But it's about what God has purposed. 
And he says his purpose shall be. That's right. He says many plans in a man's heart, but God's purpose shall, shall prevail. prevail. That means it's absolutely going to happen. It no absolutely is going to happen. Mm. So we said that this is one of the reasons why he calls us to trust in him mm -hmm. and not his works. Mm -hmm. You see, God is shifting our motivation from things to him mm. and his nature because things change. Yeah. Things and people change. That's right. <laughs> we talked about that last yes, week. Yes, ma'am. Things, mm. things deteriorate. Mm -hmm. Things rust and break and fade away and they're consumed. Things are temporary, therefore unworthy of our trust. Only God, Jehovah, and his Christ are eternal. Yes. And the only thing that, you know, and only that which is placed in his care will Bless. last. That's right. Mm. That's it. So now we saw in John chapter 6 that the people around Jesus, that they tried to compare their experience with bread and fish to the experience of the Israelites in the desert when manna came down from heaven to feed them. Mm -hmm. We said apparently... They were trying to convince Jesus that they followed Moses because of the miracles, the manna, the liberation from the Egyptian slavery, and the parting of the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And Jesus countered by reminding them that the manna did not come from Moses, but it came from God. Right. So last week we said it's dangerous to trust in miracles because again, miracles are temporary. Mm -hmm. The mortgage payment is temporary. The car note he helped you with is temporary. Mm. We never know what God is thinking unless he chooses to reveal his thoughts. That's right. He can provide the mortgage or car payment, or he can test us to see if we still will be at peace in him mm. if we miss a payment. Wow. Wow. So we said last week, why Jesus, you know, this is why Jesus is telling us to not put our faith and the things of God, mm -hmm. but put our faith in the God of the things. That's right. Amen. Amen. I mean, I want to say that again. Go ahead. We are to put our faith not in the things of God, but, but in, in the God, God of, of the, the things. things. Wow. He is eternal. Yeah. Everything else is temporary. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Amen. So now in verses 33 and 34 of John chapter six, Jesus said to the crowd, it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So last week, mm. explain, we explained that there are two kinds of bread being discussed here, mm -hmm. right? Right. The first bread is the bread of blessing, such as the manna or the miracle you experienced. Right. The bread the people, that, uh, the people ate that Jesus provided. The second kind is the true bread or the bread of God that came down from heaven. There's a song called Bread of Heaven. Yeah, I think about that every time I, <laughs> by Fred Hammond. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we said that both the bread of blessings and the true bread come from the same place, and that is from heaven. Mm -hmm. However, the bread of blessings is temporary, and we are not supposed to be satisfied with the bread. Um, the um, We're not supposed to be satisfied with it, basically. Yeah. The purpose of the bread of blessings is to kind of whet your appetite for the true bread. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to get stuck on the miracles. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to get stuck on the manna. You think about the manna and the Israelites when they moved into the promised land, the manna stopped. Yeah. It's a temporary thing. So the bread of blessings is a temporary thing. But you know what I also thought about? What's that? After a while, they got tired of the manna. Isn't it true? They wanted meat. They wanted meat. He, and guess what? He gave them And he gave them meat. Yep. And he said, they said, it, they ate it so much they saw it coming through their nose. <laughs> I said, Lord, have mercy. Right. But the bottom line is, he does not want us to be stuck on the things that he provides. Exactly. He wants us not to trust in the miracles. He wants us to trust him. Yes. Even when the miracles don't manifest, the question is, do you still trust him? Or even if the miracle doesn't manifest the way we expect it to either. Do you still trust them? Do you still trust them? Do you still love them? There you go. Like 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 it says in the beginning, can you believe in the dark? What, you what he told, told in the light. light. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. So the purpose of the bread of blessings, once again, is to whet our appetite for the true bread. Mm -hmm. And we ask, what is the nature of the true bread? Well, we said the principle of this course that Jesus had with the people is to teach us 
that the source mm -hmm. is always more important than the resource. Yes. The manufacturer is always more important than the product. That's right. Right? So we said this is critical because the resource is dispensable. The resource, the source is permanent. Yes. You know that word source, the word father means Abba. Abba. That's and right. Abba means source. That's right. We say God is our source. He is the source. Mm -hmm. The things he provide are resources. That's right. So we are never supposed to trust in the resource, but, but the always source. the source. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you to never, ever put your faith in the resource, but put your faith in faith in the source. Amen. God is our source. Amen. Amen. He is Abba. He is source. He is sustainer. Yes. He is supplier. Yes. He is our, he is the I am that I am. Amen. He's the source. We are to trust in the I am that I am. He says he wants to be known generationally as, as the I am. I am. Amen. Mm. Amen. And we saw when uh, Jesus was explaining this in verses 34 to 36 of John chapter six and verse 34, the crowd said to Jesus, sir, <laughs> From now on, give us this bread. Mm. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Amen. Uh. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never, never be, be thirsty. thirsty. Mm. But as I told you, you have seen me, yet you still do not believe. Mm. Mm. How many mm. of that mm. applies to you? Mm. You've seen him, but you don't believe. You see, last wow. week we said in the kingdom of God, the issue is not how much faith you have. But the question is, where is your faith placed? Mm. Wow. We ask, are you following Jesus Christ? Or are you following the signs and the wonders and prosperity? Mm. Are you following the source? Or are you following the, the resource? resource? Is your faith in Jesus the bread of life? Or are you satisfied only with the bread of blessings? Mm. Remember, mm. they're mm. temporary. That's right. Are you seeking to satisfy your spirit? or merely trying to fill your belly? Mm. Are you looking for the fish of the loaves? Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Are you trusting in the things that never truly satisfy? Or are you trusting in the one who satisfies forever? So last week we shared with you that most people today focus their faith on the bread and not the baker. Mm. Mm. However, wow. the, the principle of kingdom faith is to trust the source and, and not, not the resource. The resource. Mm. Amen. I'm speaking to somebody today. Yes. Trust the source and not, not the resource. resource. Now we said, make no mistake about it. The kingdom of God will meet our every need. Absolutely. He says, I meet your needs in accordance with my, my riches, riches and glory, glory. Yes. which has been enabled to you and I through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. But it is for this very reason that we are not to trust in the things that we that will meet our needs, but in the king who provides them. Amen. He's the source. Amen. Amen. He's the baker. <laughs> <laughs> so as kingdom citizens, our business is to trust, obey, and serve the king. Yes. And his business is to take care of us. That's And Abba he does Father. his job well. He's Abba. Yeah. Amen. Last week, we said that this is what Jesus meant when he spoke about seeking the kingdom of God in Matthew chapter 6. And this, of course, is one of our favorite scriptures. Yeah. So we read Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. And verses 33 through 30, 31 through 33, Jesus says, do not worry. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one. What shall you eat? Mm -hmm. What shall you drink? Mm -hmm. Or what shall you wear? He says, the pagans run after these things. Mm. He says, but your heavenly father knows you need them. Mm. But mm -hmm. he says to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you as well. Mm. So the, 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 the moral to this story is when the kingdom is present, everybody's needs are met. That's right. Is he's our father. Yes. He's not just your father and my father. He's, He's our, our father. father. That's and right. he wants his collective purpose to be manifested in the earth. That's so right. when the kingdom government is present, everybody's needs are met. Amen. Amen. Mm. So we said, wow. don't just follow God for what he can, what you can get from him. Mm -hmm. Kingdom faith is in the king and not the king's favor. Mm. It is faith in him and not his gifts. Now, last week we shared with you that in the book that the series is based on, Rediscovering um, Faith, that we talked about earlier, 
Dr. Miles um, talks about his home country of the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And you know, he gives a really poignant example. He talks about the beauty of the country that draws millions of tourists to the country for vacation. You yes. hear people talk about going to the Bahamas. Yes. You know, that's like escaping reality <laughs> and going to, you know, this wonderful place. Paradise. Paradise. Yeah. Right. He, Dr. Miles said, it ain't here. <laughs> right. But anyway, he also talks about the economic and political stability that makes the nation the envy of many. Yet this island paradise, where life is like a dream every day, mm -hmm. is also, and I don't know if people consider this, it's also in the path of the annual hurricanes mm -hmm. or cyclone track, mm -hmm. as, as so many other tourist islands are. Yeah. He explained that when the hurricanes come, the people of these countries have to endure the storms that test not only the durability or nature, structure, and people, but most importantly, the trust that the citizens have in the country's government governing systems to guide and protect them through these horrible storms. That's right. Mm. Mm. So last week we this said, even so, kingdom faith is designed not just for the good times yeah but also the bad, the, the bad times as well it's like can you believe in the dark what he showed you in the light do you trust him mm. do you trust what he said yeah amen amen so dr miles shared that in the bahamas their entire confidence was in the government agencies and the building codes which mm -hmm. were warranted to protect them and and ensure their survival mm -hmm. now if the homes were built following the building codes issued by the government, then the government guaranteed that the houses would stand the test of any storm. That's right. So in essence, the government co the government codes built for the nation for inevitable test and their obedience to these codes bring them peace and confidence and minimize their fear. Wow. Well, mm. we said the spiritual supernatural country of the kingdom of heaven with its established colony on earth is no, no different. different. That's right. Amen. Mm. The heavenly government and its constitutional promises guarantee, which the constitutional promises are in this Bible. That's right. Guarantee the security of its citizens and establishes building codes uh -huh. for the community of the kingdom, <laughs> which are designed for the inevitable storms of life. That's right. Amen. That was a mouthful, but I pray that you got it. Mm. Um, last week we said many kingdom citizens assume that if we are going through difficult times, it means that they do not have enough faith. Mm -hmm. And we said this is That's simply not so. not so. That's right. Right? We shared with you that kingdom faith does not remove us from hardship. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. Kingdom, you know, and a lot of people, I remember years ago, people say, come to Jesus and all your troubles are going to go away. <sighs> That's a lie from the That's pit a of lie. hell. You he know? says you shall have tribulation. He said you shall, but he says tribulation worketh patience. patience. Amen. Let patience have a perfect work Let, in you. So that it does what? It matures us mm, mm, to the mm. point where we're lacking nothing. That's right. So we share with you the kingdom faith does not remove us from hardship, mm -hmm. but instead it preserves and protects us through mm. the hardship. That's right. Amen. Amen. So once again, the key is where we place our faith, not how much faith we have. Mm -hmm. Now, last week we read Matthew chapter seven and saw how the king of heaven addressed this very issue of faith in the building codes of this, his kingdom. In verses 24 through 27, Jesus says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine or the building codes mm -hmm. and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. That's right. Jesus is the rock. <laughs> the rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Mm. But everyone who hears these words of mine or the building codes mm -hmm. and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. Yep. Mm, that's Dan. <laughs> the, rain came, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Wow. He says, do not merely listen to the word, mm. but do what the word, word says. says. That's right. Mm. You see, we said... The concept of tests, trials, and storms in life of the kingdom citizen on earth is not one that should be foreign and unexpected, 
but rather anticipate it with confidence and faith. Amen. Kingdom faith embraces the storms and it proves its worth in trial. Mm -hmm. We reminded you that your faith is only as strong as the test it survives. So we also shared with you how the king of the kingdom related this concept to his citizens on another occasion in John chapter 16, verse 33. The king said, I had told you these things so that in me you would have peace. Yes. Then he goes on to say, in this world, you will have tribulation, uh -huh. but that, but that conjunction, but, but what does that mean? That cancels, you, cancels out everything, everything that's before. before. He says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Mm, so that means I can have peace. He, that's why he said, I, he said, I'm telling you this so that you can have peace mm -hmm. because I know that trials and tribulations are coming. I know that you're going to experience them, but you can have peace. That's right. Because I have over, I have already overcome, overcome the, the world. world. Amen. Mm, Amen. Mm, mm. Peace in the midst of the storm. Peace in the midst of the storm. Peace. The storms are raging all around you. Mm -hmm. The storms of life. You know, you think about even what's happening today. There's so much happening in the world today. Mm -hmm. There's so much happening. Mm-hmm but you can still have peace in the midst of it. That's right. He says, although you're in the world, you're not of it. That's right. You are governed by the king of heaven. That's right. Amen. Amen. You put your faith and trust in him. That's right. He has oversight over your life. He's responsible for you. That's right. what he's saying. That's right. Mm, mm, mm. Now, another governmental promise that the king assures the kingdom citizens is found in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And we referenced it last week also. Uh -huh. Jesus said, behold, he says, I have given you authority. Now uh -huh. that word authority means the right to control. Yes. Command. Uh -huh. And it will happen. He says, I have given you the authority to control to, or, or to the authority to trample on the heads of serpents and scorpions mm -hmm. and over all the powers of the enemy. Mm. And he says, and nothing by any means shall harm you. Mm, mm, I mean, mm. did you hear that? Yes. Jesus said, do you, and this is key. Do you believe him? Yes. Do you believe what he said in his word? Then you have a, that you have a right to what he says. He says, I've given you the power and the authority to trample on the serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Who's the enemy? Satan. Satan. Satan himself. He says, I'm giving. He says, how do you, he says, you, <laughs> he, 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 how do you, you know, you, you spoil a strong man's house except you first bind the strong, strong man. man. That's and right. what did he do 2,000 years ago? He bound the strong man. He bound the strong man. Mm, so mm, he's mm. now giving you and me the a power and the authority over the enemy. That's right. And he says, and nothing by any means shall harm you. Mm. So last week we asked has anyone ever asked you, well, if God is so good, why is this happening to you? Well, <laughs> we said Jesus answered that question right here. Perhaps you have questioned why you are facing difficult challenges or wondered if the king of kingdom, the kingdom knows your circumstances. Mm. Well, we shared with you that your, our relationship with God has nothing to do with what happens to us as it relates to trials, tests, challenges, and assumed disappointments. Mm -hmm. The Lord doesn't spare us from hardships of life just because we are kingdom citizens. On the contrary, mm -hmm. he allows the trials for the purposes of testing, yes. strengthening, and purifying our faith. Yes. Learning to persevere through hardship molds and matures our character. This is the way of the kingdom. Yes, if you say is. you're a kingdom citizen, this, this is, is the, the way, way of, of the kingdom. kingdom. This is That means this is how we operate this in the kingdom. This is how we operate. Mm. So last week we read two scriptures that support this truth in Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 4 and James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. In verse 3 of Romans it says, we do what? We glory in tribulations. Wow. Mm. You glory, but okay. So what does that really mean? To to glory means the full weight and the true essence of who God is. Yes. 
So what he's saying is when you go through tribulation, you are reflecting the true essence and the nature, nature of our father. Yes. He is all powerful. Yes. He is all seeing. He is all knowing. He is all wise. Yes. He is I am whatever yes. you need. When you glory through tribulation, you're reflecting the true nature of the awesomeness of God. Amen. Amen. Glory, Amen. glory is just not giving him a clap of your hands. Right. It's reflecting who he is. Mm, Amen. Mm, mm. He says, we glory in tribulation, knowing that the tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance, character and character, character hope. Mm. And then in James chapter one, verse two, it says, my brother, and this is one of my, this is one that gets me. It got me the first time I, I read it. It says, <laughs> my brethren, you, my brethren, my brethren out there watching us, yes. count it all joy. Mm -hmm. Now the NIV version says, Count it pure, pure joy mm. when you fall into various trials, knowing the testing of your faith produces patience. Then in verse three, it says, let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking, lacking nothing. nothing. Wow. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. So we said, if you find this idea hard to accept, consider the experience of Daniel and the lion's den. And nobody ain't been in no lion's den, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so Daniel was truly tested. Yes. And during this test, what did he do? He, he trusted, trusted God. God. Yeah. His faith was unwavering. Mm. And we read Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 through 24 to see just what happened to Daniel. Well, Daniel was made a governor in King Darius's kingdom. And the king was very pleased with him because Daniel had an excellent spirit in him. Mm -hmm. King Darius was even thinking about placing Daniel over the entire kingdom. And this made the other governors and satraps upset. And because of the jealousy, they conspired. They conspired toward Daniel. You know, they came together to plot against him. Mm -hmm. They couldn't find any fault in Daniel because he was faithful. Yes. Well, they finally came to the conclusion that the only way that they could bring any charge against Daniel, it had to be concerning his God. Mm -hmm. So they went to King Darius and they tricked him into signing a law that stated anyone in the kingdom who petitioned any God or any other man except the king for 30 days was to be thrown in the lion's den. Uh-huh. Trick. Well, <laughs> of course, because of his faithfulness, you know, because of Daniel's faithfulness in God and he loved God, Daniel did what? He did what he always did. He mm -hmm. went home. He went into his upper room. He, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt and he prayed three times that day. Now, when the governors and the satraps caught him, they rushed to King Darius, basically saying, Oh, King, you signed this law saying that anyone who prays to any God or man for the next 30 days, except you, must be cast into the lion's den. Well, Daniel was praying today, which shows that he does not show regard for you or the law that you signed. Mm, mm, mm. And when the king heard this, he became very displeased and he set his heart on delivering Daniel because he loved Daniel. Right. Now the men came back to the king. Okay. Reminding him what he said. Right. Essentially saying, you made a decree. And remember, it's our custom that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. Mm -hmm. So, of course, because of this, King Darius had to give the command to have Daniel thrown into the lion's den. Now, while Daniel was being thrown into the lion's den, the king called to Daniel. Now, this is the king now who didn't uh -huh. believe in God. Right. But he believed in the God of Daniel. He right. said... Your king, Daniel, he said to Daniel, he said to Daniel, your God, whom you serve continually, will deliver you. Yeah, he knew it. The king knew it already. The king already knew that he, because he believed in Daniel's God. Mm, mm, mm. He believed in him. He didn't serve him, but he <laughs> believed in him. And he said, Daniel, your God, who you continually serve. Right. He, he will save you. you. Right. He will deliver you. Well, King Darius went back to his palace and spent the night fasting and did not sleep. And early the next morning, the king raced, he rushed to the den to check on Daniel. He cried out, Daniel, servant of the living God, mm. has your God, whom you continually serve, been able to deliver you from the lions? And Daniel replied, he said, oh, king, <laughs> live forever. My God sent the angels 
and shut the, the lion's, lion's mouth, mouth so that mm. they would not hurt me. Mm, mm, mm. And in verse 23, it says, when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him. The lions, even though the angels shut their mouths, you know, they have claws. They didn't even try to claw at him. Mm. He had no wound found on him because he trusted in God. Mm, mm, so mm. last week we asked, how would you feel if you were in wow. Daniel's place and you had mm. just been told that because of your faithfulness, obedience to God, you were going to be thrown in a dinner full of hungry lions. Mm. How would you feel? We said, Daniel, we said, maybe Daniel prayed for deliverance and maybe he expected an angel to come. Mm -hmm. but no angel showed up. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Daniel then thought that he would be translated supernaturally to safety, vanishing before the very eyes of King Darius and his court before they threw him into this den. Well, no vanishing took place. Mm. So as they led Daniel in chains toward the lion's den, he may have thought that God would catch him halfway down the hall, <laughs> loosen his chains and set him free. But that didn't happen either. Right. By the time he heard the growling of the lions, Daniel may have begun to wonder, where is God? Mm. However, he, we said that when he was thrown into the den, surrounded by the hungry lions, he found out where God was. Yeah. God was right there in the den with him. Amen. God was right there. Mm, he didn't mm, stop mm. him from going in, but he, he was, was in there it. With him. He was there with him. Mm, mm, God mm. sent an angel ahead of Daniel to shut the lion's mouth so that no harm could come to his servant. He saved Daniel, but not until Daniel faced the trial of the lion's den without knowing the outcome beforehand. Mm. So last wow. week we said Daniel had to shift his trust from the works of God to the God, God himself. himself. Amen. That's right. He, the, the source and not the resource. Yes. We also said that Daniel's quality of kingdom faith is very rare today in religious communities as many of our contemporary doctrines and belief systems promote a shallow version of faith that focuses more on avoidance faith mm -hmm. than enduring and overcoming faith. Yes. It is a faith built on avoiding troubles, trials, and tests rather than facing, enduring, and overcoming temporary opportunities to prove eternal power of God, of the kingdom of our God. Amen? Amen. And we ended stating that we need the faith of Daniel to be restored in this world today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That was awesome. Daniel. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that review. Amen. It's always God be the glory. It's always good to review mm -hmm. what we talked about the previous week. And you always, even though we teach it, yes. you always learn something or God reveals something to you when you look at it again. Amen. That you didn't catch the first time. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. how you know teaching. Repeating, repeating until learning takes place until learning takes place yeah amen amen mm. amen mm. so now let's go ahead and move into our new content for this week and today we're continuing in our new series the purpose and power of kingdom faith mm -hmm. and we're continuing on in our subtopic where is your faith so we just talked about daniel right <laughs> and the great faith he had in god during his tests with the lions then mm -hmm. Well, Daniel wasn't the only one who showed great faith during his test. He had three friends named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm -hmm. who also had their faith tested and strengthened. Mm -hmm. And just as Daniel had to face the trial of the lion's den without knowing the outcome beforehand, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to endure a fiery furnace before they found out or before they found their deliverance and discovered that God was with them in the fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the story of these three young Hebrew professionals mm -hmm. should serve as a source of great encouragement and an outstanding example of true kingdom faith. So today we're going to recount some of the details of their encounter with the government of another kingdom called Babylon mm -hmm. and see the superiority of the currency of their faith as it activated the economy of God in their favor. Amen. 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 So let's start at the very beginning. In <laughs> Daniel chapter 1, we find the backstory of Daniel and his friends. Mm -hmm. And in verses 3 through 7 of the chapter, it tells us this. It says, Then the king ordered Aspenaz, 
Lord, these names, Lord. <laughs> Chief of his court officials, he ordered him to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility. Now, mm -hmm. let me also say this. So the Israelites had just been captive or um, had become captured, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. Up against Babylon. And mm -hmm. so the king is telling Ashpenaz, mm -hmm. however you pronounce his name, he's telling him to go throughout the Israelites and get some of the um, the young men from the royal families and the nobility mm -hmm. of out of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. So he told him to look for young men without physical defects. They had to be handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. Mm -hmm. And he was to teach them the language and the literature of the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. So the king assigned a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table, and they were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were supposed to enter into the king's service. Mm -hmm. Now among these were some from Judah, Daniel, mm -hmm. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Mm -hmm. So the chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, he gave the name Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. To Hananiah, he gave the name Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, mm -hmm. and to Azariah, Abednego. Mm -hmm. So they even changed their names when they got into this new kingdom. Mm -hmm. Well, during their time in the kingdom, Daniel and his friends found favor in the eyes of King Nebuchadnezzar because it said none was found like them. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. some things that happen. Go back and read it. We can't. We don't have enough time to go into detail. Yes. Okay. But I <laughs> encourage you to go back to Daniel chapter 1 and read what happened. So then in chapter 2 of Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar became even more pleased with Daniel because Daniel was the only one in his kingdom who could interpret the dream that he had. Mm -hmm. He went through all the, the, bright, the brightest and all the wise men and all the psychics, quote unquote, to find out if they could interpret the dream, mm -hmm. but nobody could interpret it but Daniel. And because of this, in verse 48 of Daniel chapter 2, it says that the king promoted Daniel. He gave him many gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon. Mm -hmm. And he made him the chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. So moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as administrators over the province of Babylon, mm -hmm. while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. Now, at the beginning of chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue of himself that was 60 cubits or 90 feet tall mm. and 6 cubits or 9 feet wide. That's huge. That's huge. That's <laughs> taller than some buildings. Yes. So the governors and the satraps and the advisors, all the higher ups in um, Babylon, the treasurers, the judges, and the magistrates, they assembled together for the dedication of the statue. Mm -hmm. And while they were there, they made a proclamation, commanded the people, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the horns, the flute, the zyla, the lyre, the harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar set up. Mm -hmm. So anytime you heard the music, you, you need drop. to be, you <laughs> drop to your knees and start <laughs> worshiping this image, okay? That's basically what they said. Mm -hmm. And then they say, whoever does not fall down and worship will be immediately thrown into a blazing furnace. Wow. Well. It was rough back then, wasn't it? It was <laughs> rough, okay? You don't, wor you don't worship any other gods other than me for 30 days. And if you do, you get thrown to the lion's den. Right. And then if you worship, if you don't bow down to this image of me, another king, if you don't bow down to this fire. image of me, you're going into the fire. Right. And we cry about the things that we go through. Mm -hmm. And it, in comparison to this, there is it's nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. There is no comparison. Mm. Well, guess what? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to do so. They refused to bow down and worship this image. And when the king heard of it, he became full of rage and summoned them to be brought before him. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in verse 14, King Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Mm, mm, mm. Arrogant. Listen. He said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, <laughs> that you don't serve my gods or worship the image of gold I've set up? So now he's going to act like he's giving them another chance. Now, 
When you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the leery, the harp and pipes, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. And then he says, what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? But mm. that's a, you know, okay, I could go so many directions with that. <laughs> but think of what's some modern day examples of what you just said. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. because there, the, the, many in the world don't believe in God. Right. They don't believe in Jehovah Elohim Adonai God. Yes. They don't believe, they believe, I don't know what they believe, but they believe, you know, and they're, 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 the arrogancy of them to even think that, you know, what God will deliver you from my hands. Right. That That's a modern day analogy of some of the things that are happening today. Yeah, it and is. And it's unfortunate, but it's the truth. And because people don't believe in God, they, they get um, impacted by people like that. Yes. But when you are the Shadrach, Meshachs, and Abednegoes, when you know that your God is God. It doesn't shake you. It does not move you. Mm, mm, mm. So listen, this is what they said in, reply, in response to him. Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to him, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. That's what they said. That's confidence and That's, faith in God. That's confidence. That's full confidence. We don't need... They were very confident. Yeah, he probably, he, the king probably thought they were arrogant for saying that back to him. But that's why he got so mad and said, hit the, the mm -hmm. furnace seven times hotter. Yeah. So then it did, it did, they didn't just stop there. They said, but even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Mm -hmm. So they said, mm -hmm. even if he doesn't deliver us from the fire, we still not going to do what you told us to do. <laughs> Did you hear what they said in the response to the king? Mm. The boldness and the confidence they displayed in their response? See, faith in God will do that. It will give you a boldness and a confidence you didn't know you had. Mm. But their response and their refusal to worship another God also showed the great love that they had for mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. So the amazing thing about the faith of these young kingdom citizens was their expression of belief that even if God did not rescue them, the integrity of the kingdom of God would remain intact. That's right. That's right. That's important. Mm. So this true, this is true kingdom faith, and it must be restored in our daily lives, mine too, mm. in the kingdom. Amen. We need faith that is stable, even when our expectations of God's strategy is miscalculated. Faith that is willing to be burned in the fire, proving its eternal nature. Mm, mm, mm. So in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 7, the kingdom ambassador, the apostle Peter, said this, In this you greatly rejoice. Listen, though for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, these have come, talking about the trials, so that your faith, which is of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine mm. and may result in praise, glory, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Your faith may be proved genuine. genuine. Wow. What does genuine mean? It means pure, without... It's the real deal. It's the real deal. So he's saying that mm. it's coming to prove your faith. Yeah. Mm. That your faith is genuine. Mm. That is real. That is real. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. You see, the more your faith is tested, mm. the more mm. your confidence grows. Your, the more your confidence in the kingdom grows. Well, what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? We're going to read it today. I'm going to ask my mother to go to Daniel chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 19 through 30. We're going to read to find out what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego after they clap back, at the, <laughs> as the young people say, as they clap back at the king. <laughs> 
So let's read it. Again, we're going to Daniel <laughs> chapter 3, verses 19 through 30. Amen. Oh, Lord have mercy. So I'm reading from the New King James Version. Amen. And it reads, Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, because remember they just clapped back. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shad Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he spoke, commanding that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men, he was the big strong man, mm -hmm. the big strong man of valor, who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the fiery furnace. Then those men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and they were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was so urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of fire killed the men mm -hmm. who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the big burly men mm -hmm. that he had bind and tie them to take them up and put them in the fire, they, they burned. burned up and died. And mm. these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then the king, mm. King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose up in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said that to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. Mm. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now, how mm. did he know what the Son of God looked like? Mm, mm, mm. But he said the fourth man looked like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. You hear that? Change that up real quick. He changed it up. <laughs> First he said, what God can deliver you from my hand? Right. Then he, now he said, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and king's counselors gathered together and saw that these men whose bodies, excuse me, let me be slow here. And th they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power, mm. the hair of their hair was not singed, nor their garments affected, and they didn't even have the smell of fire on them. Mm. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make a decree. Remember the words of the king is unchanging. Mm -hmm. I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces and their houses shall be made as an ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Mm. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Isn't that awesome? Mm, mm, Suppose mm. they said that today. I decree that any people, nation, language speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we know God. that's Jehovah, Elohim, Adonai God. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're going to be cut into pieces. And their houses shall be made an ash heap mm. because there is no other God who can deliver like that. Mm. Put a nickel in the meter. And pop it right, right there. there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say after that? Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Mm. And thank you for reading. Amen. So in all of this, in all of that, that Shadrach and Meshach went through, and Abednego went through. Mm -hmm. Where was God? In the midst. Guess what? Where was he? He was the fourth man in the fire. He was the fourth man in the fire. In the fire. Right. They didn't get, you know, he didn't he didn't pluck them up off the steps as they took them up to put them into the furnace, right? He was in there he already. He let them go in bound. He let them go in bound and he loosed them. Mm, mm, mm. And the fire had no effect on them. It said they didn't even smell like fire. And they were probably like, how in the world is this possible when the men that were putting them in there got burnt up? And they, it didn't affect them and at all. And it didn't affect them at all. Didn't even smell like smoke. Okay? 
That's why Jesus said you're in this world, but you're not of it. You're under the jurisdiction of the king of heaven. Yeah. Your government is greater. Yes. Your king is greater. Yes. Amen. Amen. And nothing by any means shall harm you. And nothing by any means shall harm you. Not even a furnace full of fire. Not even a fire. Not even a a den of hungry lions. No. Nothing. Amen. Mm. Not even a coronavirus. Come on now. Stop. (laughs) And I know. Okay. (laughs) Don't (laughs) stop. You can ask me. We'll take a praise break. Listen. Okay. (laughs) Listen. Mm. So God was in the same place he was when Daniel went to the lion's den. Amen. He was right there in the furnace with them. And in verse 24, King Nebuchadnezzar asked, we just talked about this. He Mm -hmm. said, weren't there three men that were tied up that we threw into the fire? And they said, true, O king. (laughs) And then he said, well, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like the son of God. Amen. So God was right there with them in the furnace. Mm, mm, So mm. now let's look at another example of kingdom citizens whose faith in God activated the economy of heaven. Mm, I want to ask my mother again. I got you doing a lot of work. That's okay. That's all right. (laughs) To go to Acts chapter 16, and we're going to read verses 16 through 34. So this is Paul and Silas in prison. We know this story, but we're going to hear it again today. And I'm Mm -hmm. reading from the New King James Version. Paul... Uh, Acts chapter 16 verses 16 to 34 Mm -hmm. and it reads now it happened as they went to prayer that a certain girl certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us who bought her masters much profit by fortune telling she was making money for Mm -hmm. the girl followed Paul, Paul and us and cried out saying These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And she did this for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Mm. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, because she couldn't tell them more fortunes, Mm -hmm. they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, these men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he, the jailer, Mm -hmm. um, put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in in the stocks. Mm -hmm. But, say but, but, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Mm -hmm. God inhabits the praises of his people. That's right. They were singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Mm. And the keeper of the prison awakened from his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, Supposing all the prisoners had fled, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Mm. But Paul called out with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm for we are all here. Then he called for a light and ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out saying, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Mm. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved you and your household. Mm. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took the same hour, um, and he took them that same hour that night and washed their stripes. This is the prisoner washing the stripes of Paul and Silas. Mm -hmm. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. And when they were bought, and when they bought him into them into the house, they set food before them. So the, the prisoner fed him, the prison fed him. And he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Amen. 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 God stepped in. He stepped in all right. He, he stepped in and broke the prison up. <laughs> I keep saying, you know, my definition is, 
you know, God, you know, the, the earthquakes come because God, he, 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 he can't fit into this earth. Yes. He can't fit in. But when he tries to step in, the, you look back at the children of Israel, you uh -huh. know, when, when he wanted to come down on the mountain to meet them. You know, it talked about the thunderings and the lightnings and the earthquakes. Yeah. And they were afraid. Here's another time. It earthquake. Yep. And it broke the chains. It opened the doors. That's God coming into the praises of his people. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. They done been beat up and locked in prison. And the prison, the prison guard knew that had they all escaped, he would have been he, killed. And he was about to kill himself. So he was killing himself before they could kill him. But that's why Paul said, do, do no harm to yourself. We are all still here. Mm. And because of that, because of their faithfulness and their belief and trust in God, despite being put in prison, yes, the prison guard's whole household got saved. Mm, mm, mm. So that means even, even I'm thinking about it this way too. Even when we go through tests, it's not, it is for us, but it's not just for us. It's, you know, God's plan is never just for an individual. Oh yeah. His we plan were talking about is that earlier. It's yeah, collective. It's collective. He has a global purpose mm, mm, for mm. all the people of the earth, not just for one or two. But for everybody. But for everybody. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. So, and thank you for reading Amen. again. So in the city of Philippi, Paul and Silas were beaten, as we just read, mm -hmm. thrown into prison, mm -hmm. and had their feet locked into stocks for preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. Well, instead of whining and complaining about their circumstances, mm -hmm. they worshiped and sang hymns to God right there in the prison. Yep. Can you worship God in the midst of the dark times? When you talk be about Beat up, you hurt, locked up. You locked up. Now, now, after after everything happened, he he cleaned their sores. But they yes. in prison would probably sores. How many stripes on their backs? Sores while in a dirty prison. Right. Who knows what's crawling around in there? Right. And then they're singing praise songs to God. And I'm thinking, I have to. So the stocks that Use were locked around their feet. Mm -hmm. They couldn't Doing go those, nowhere. They couldn't go nowhere. Exactly. But I also, and it may not have been the case with Paul and Silas, mm -hmm. but some during those time periods, those stops for their feet were up on the ceiling. Oh yeah. And they would the prisoners would be hanging upside down yeah. by their feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. can you imagine that? No. No, I can't. <laughs> and then you singing he they and they after all of that they singing praises to God I and singing him. I love you, Lord. <laughs> and I lift my voice. Come on. Right. Right. That. After all of that. Right. During all of that. And you know, God, he doesn't just put these stories in the, you know, because you, you know that during these times, so many other things happen. But there's certain things that God allowed to be penned in the Bible for our learning. Yeah. For our understanding of how he expects us to operate. As you said yes. earlier, he doesn't deliver us from the trials. Yes. As a matter of fact, we he said we shouldn't consider it foreign when they happen. Right. But we should expect them. Yes. And as we anticipate them, like Jesus says, I have given you authority. Yes. Over the serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. And not, nothing. Do you have that righteous indignation? Yes. Knowing and understanding what God said in his word. Yes. And believing that you have a right. Do you have do you have a belief? That you have the ability to manifest heaven's government over earthly situations. Come on. You got to believe But it. that's the power and the authority that he's given us. Yeah. Mm, mm, so mm, you're going to mm. go through trouble, but you have to learn how to trouble your trouble. Come on. Right. You understand, you know? Yes. He said to bring every situation, every circumstance under, under the, the knowledge, knowledge of, of God, Jesus Christ. Mm. which is Jesus Christ. Mm. Because it is Jesus who has reconciled us to God's family and restored us into the kingdom with full rights. He bound the strong man. Yes. And now that he bound the strong man, we can take the spoils. The yes. spoils is we now have what God originally intended from the beginning. Amen. We have dominion authority over the earth. That's right. Through the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of God's Holy Spirit living in us. Mm. Psalms 8 says, you know, 
He has made us to have dominion over the work of his hands. He has placed all things in the earth under, under our, our authority. Yes. Our feet, mm -hmm. which is authority. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Jesus Christ has enabled that. That's why Isaiah 9, 6 says, and the government is going to be upon his shoulder. He returned God's government to the right earth. To the earth. When he said, repent, because the kingdom is at hand, he had the government yes. of heaven. Yes. And he returned it to the earth. Yes. And because we are cleansed, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are once again a dwelling place of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, who is the government of heaven manifested in earthen vessels. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. All right. You teach it now, I'm, sis. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back on the script. I'm, woo, woo. Mm, mm, somebody mm. needed to hear that. Yes. I needed to hear it. Amen. We all needed to hear it. You know, because we teach it as we, you know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing yeah, by the, the word, word of God. God. So as we speak it out of our mouths, if it's not ministering to you, it's definitely ministering to me. Amen. 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 And me too. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. So God sent an earthquake that released all the prisoners, not just Paul and Silas, it released all of them. That's right. And as a result, the, the jailer was converted to Christ along with his entire family. That's right. So if our faith is in God, it doesn't matter what happens around us because God is stable. Amen. He never shifts or moves. And it tells us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and, and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Mm. So in John chapter 6, verses 53 through 57, Jesus is still talking to the same crowd of people who left Galilee looking for him in uh, Capernaum. Mm -hmm. The crowd of people that ate the fish, fish and the bread. Had their bellies filled. Yes. They said, well, when did you get here, Rabbi? When did you get here? They kept, went looking for him, right? Because they wanted some more. They wanted more fishing. <laughs> <laughs> so in this conversation, Jesus is telling them to put their trust in him, mm -hmm. the bread that came down from mm -hmm. heaven. So we're going to read it right now. I'm going to ask my mother, uh, Sister Annette again. So go to John chapter 6, and we're going to read this time verses 53 through 58. Amen. Amen. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in him. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, mm -hmm. and I will rise him up at the last day. For my blood, for my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Mm. As, the, as the living father sent me, I live because the father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. Mm. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Amen. 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 And thank you for reading Amen. again. So Jesus essentially said to the crowd, listen, eat my flesh. Mm. Don't eat the things that I give you. Eat me. Mm. Drink my blood. Don't drink the blessings of life, but drink me. Mm -hmm. And if you do, you will have life. Mm -hmm. See, when our faith is in him, we can endure anything because we trust in his power and not our own. And because he will not allow us to be tested beyond our ability to endure. Amen. And the king, the bread of heaven, he tells us this in his word. It's in the building code. The building code. The building code. <laughs> Listen, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, No temptation has seized you or overcome you mm -hmm. or overtaken you mm -hmm. except which, that which is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you, listen, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Mm -hmm. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. or a, a way, way of, of escape, escape. Yes. so that you can stand up under it. Mm. Wow. So again, we ask, and you don't have to answer it right now, but how strong are you? Mm. Remember, you are as strong as whatever your faith survives. Wow. And kingdom faith will always be tested because that's how it grows strong. Say that again. Kingdom, kingdom faith, faith will, will always, always be, be tested, tested because that's how it grows strong. Mm. 
just as your muscles, I got some over here. <laughs> just as your muscles develop strength the more they are used, so too our faith gets stronger the more we exercise it. And you have to have opportunity to exercise you it, right? You gotta have an opportunity to do it. Wow. Mm. So you can't say you're strong or you really believe in God or God is so good to you if you've never been through anything. Your faith is only as strong as the test that survives. Your faith is as only as strong as the test that survives. Wow. So the greatest test of faith and therefore the greatest potential for growth come during times of hardship. People don't want to hear that though. Because it don't sound good and it don't feel good. It they don't like, feel I'm good, gonna... it don't feel good, but it works for our good and his glory. Amen. 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 Mm. So if you trust in the Lord, get ready for the test. Mm. Examination day is coming. Wow. If you were to lose a job or a house, or if your child was sick and continued prayer produced no observable results, would you still believe in God's omniscient goodness? Mm. Would you still be confident in the overshadowing government of heaven in the affairs of your life? Well, guess what? That is kingdom faith. That's kingdom faith. That's it. Believing in the dark, what you were told in the light. Mm, mm, mm. Now, in the kingdom of God, many citizens only follow the king for the good times and the good things. In fact, the majority of people in the Christian religious community seem to have a relationship with God based on how they can benefit personally rather than living as a citizen in a country with responsibilities, obligations, and commitments to obey the laws, mm -hmm. maintain community, and function according to the principles of the kingdom society. Many religious believers treat God as a genie in a bottle whom they manipulate to meet their <laughs> private wishes. So this was the attitude of the people in the vi village of Capernaum when Jesus, is, when Jesus visited them after providing them with free fish and bread. So we're going to revisit that encounter today. I'm going to ask Sister Annette to go back to John chapter 6, and we're going to read verse 25 through 29. Mm-hmm. And this is when they went looking for him. And, they, mm -hmm. and it reads, And they found him on the other side of the sea, and they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, because not because you saw signs, but because you are, because you ate the loaves and were filled. Mm -hmm. He says, Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Mm -hmm. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may do the works of God, that we may work the works of God? Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered him and said, This is the work of God, that you believe on him who he sent. Amen. Amen. That's simple. That's believe simple. on him who, who he, he sent. sent. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you for reading. Amen. So in verse 26, again, Jesus said to the people, I tell you the truth. You're looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. You got your belly full. You got your belly full. That's why you came looking for me. That's mm. what Jesus said. He said, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal, eternal life, life, which the Son of Man will give you, mm -hmm. and on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Amen. So then they asked him, what must we do to do the work that God requires? Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Basically saying, believe, believe in, in him. him. That's right. So Jesus' assessment of their motive for following him was for what they could get from him. That's it. They had no concept of kingdom citizenship and their obligation to serve the kingdom in spite of any condition. Mm. And the king's statement, do not work for bread that spoils, implies that belief in God should not be motivated by the positive benefits we can derive from that relationship, but by the character and nature of the benevolent king who loves his citizens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So consider these words. As Jesus continues his discourse, he says this, I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. 
He says, I am the bread of life. That's right. That's right. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert and they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. Mm, mm, mm. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. For this bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Wow. That's, and that's what he did. But that's exactly what he did. That's exactly he what he did. He gave his life. He gave his life. So that the world could live. And see, people don't, you know, I could just go on and on, but I'm just going to stop. Mm, mm, mm. There's so much. There's just so much of that. He came. Go ahead. Just keep going. Mm, we'll mm, be here mm. forever. <laughs> So here, Jesus was testing the quality and object of their faith, and he was correcting their misplaced focus. Yes. So unfortunately, many of the people in Capernaum with Jesus that day, they, they failed, failed the test. test. They failed. After all, the call to kingdom faith is a call to rise to challenges, overcome obstacles, and triumph over hardships. And many people simply are unwilling to pay the price. They don't want to go through anything. Mm. So this certainly was true of many of the uh, many in Capernaum who were put off by Jesus' call to eat his flesh and drink his blood. So they did, they started turning away from him. Let's read about that. I'm going to ask Sister Annette again. Back to John chapter 6. And we're jumping down to verses 60 to 69. Amen. And it says, therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is too hard, saying, <laughs> who can understand it? Mm -hmm. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? Mm. What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe, and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. Mm. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Mm. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to also go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. Thank you for reading. Amen. Amen. So in verse 60, it says that many of the people following Jesus said, this is a it's hard teaching. Mm -hmm. This is too hard for me. Well, some people may be thinking even what we're teaching today is too hard. Yep. Because we're teaching what he just taught. We're teaching exactly what he just taught. Mm. No difference. No difference. And his position has not changed. Exactly. We just said he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's right. He's unchanging, and so are his laws. Mm. So they said, this is a hard teaching, and who can accept this? Mm. Who can follow this? And because of Jesus' words, many of his disciples or the people of Capernaum turned back and no longer followed him. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus saw this, he turned to his 12 disciples and asked, you don't want to leave too, do you? Mm -hmm. And Simon Peter answered him saying, Lord, to where shall we go? Ain't nowhere to go. Ain't nowhere else to go. There's nowhere else to go, God, but you. That's it. Mm -hmm. He said, you have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Mm. So you may be asking, why did the people consider Jesus' words a hard teaching? Well, it's because they realized he was calling them to follow him with no guarantees of fish and bread. That's right. He was calling them to be satisfied with him and him alone. No manna, no quail. No nothing. No nothing. No guarantees of it. Just believe. That's it. Just believe. And he was calling them to follow him without knowing outcomes in advance, content to leave the future in his hands. Can you leave your future in the hands of God? 
Once again, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego demonstrated this kind of faith when they stood before King Nebuchadnezzar, threatened with death in a fiery furnace for refusing to obey the king's command to worship the great idol he had built. Mm -hmm. And the arrogant king demanded to know what God could rescue them from his hand. And again, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king saying, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. <laughs> if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That's kingdom faith. That's kingdom faith. Faith that trusts God whether he blesses or not, whether he delivers us or not, whether he heals us or not. Kingdom faith trusts in Christ no matter what because it knows that he has the words of eternal life. Mm -hmm. And citizens who have kingdom faith have discovered the same truth expressed by King David who wrote in Psalms chapter 63 verse 3, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. This well, is such a good series. It really is. It really is. And we're just at the beginning. We're just so, scratching the surface. So hold on, because we'll be in this for probably the rest of this year almost. Yeah. Mm, but there's mm, so much mm. to uncover. There's so much to uncover. So much to uncover, so much to learn. Amen. So we're going to end on this note, but again, of course, like we just said, there's still so much more to cover. So remember to join us each Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. as we continue this series called The Purpose and Power of Kingdom Faith. It is for those, those who, who choose. choose. Amen. Amen. Now, if you are watching... Mm -hmm. For those of you who are watching and desire to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus, forgiven of your sins, and to be reconciled to God's family and restored into your kingdom, citizenship, authority in earth, you don't have to die. Mm -hmm. You can have it right here. This new life has been made available to you through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you choose this life today, please join me now in this prayer. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. You said in your word that he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I know that you won't cast me out, but instead you take me in. Yes. So I thank you, Heavenly Father, for taking me in. You also said in your word, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, as I call upon your name, I thank you for saving me. You said if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Therefore, Heavenly Father, I confess this day with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. I believe in my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead for my justification. And now because of this, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, Heavenly Father, you also said, how much more shall you give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Therefore, I am asking you to please fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you also for baptizing me in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now fill me to the point of overflowing. In the name Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, if you've just prayed this prayer with me, you are now cleansed by the blood of Jesus from sin and unrighteousness. You are now reconciled unto your heavenly father as his son, mm -hmm. which means his mature offspring or his yes. children. You are now also filled with the Holy Spirit of Christ. And you are restored unto your kingdom, citizenship, authority, with the power and the authority to reign and rule in life. Amen. Welcome back to the family. Amen. Welcome back to the family of God. Amen. I challenge you to begin dominating in life by the power of the Holy Spirit living in you and the authority given to you to dominate in life by Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Amen. Now also, if you've prayed this prayer with us today, feel free to let us know in the comments 
or send a message, especially if you'd like someone to follow up with you. Amen. 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 So now let's go ahead and move into our open forum discussion. Are there any questions from our audience? Amen. Now's the time if you have any questions to so go ahead and please place them in the comment section. Mm -hmm. This was a good teaching. This was. All of them have been. I know. It, and it's, it just keeps building on top of it. You know, it, it gets, as, as we used to say, gooder and gooder. <laughs> it is for those who choose, though. Yeah. You know, some people, you know, just like those people, you know, looking at Jesus saying, this is too hard of a saying. Mm hmm But that's kingdom faith. It if is. If you are a, a citizen of the kingdom, the word tells us in this world you will have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. Amen. So that you can have peace in Amen. the midst of the storm. Amen. Mm, 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 mm. Amen. Well, if you missed any of our prior sessions from our Sunday series, I strongly urge you to go back and watch all of them. They're still saved on our Facebook page under For Those Who Choose Ministries Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And you can access them from our website at www.ftwcinc.org. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and see all of our videos there. So remember to join us each Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. for our continued studies. And may you be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will know the good, the acceptable, acceptable and perfect, perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. And now the final thing that we always want to remind you of, and that is Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Amen. God bless you all. See you next week.